What's up everybody? You're here with the Fly Guy. All right, today I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about impressionistic crayfish patterns and the Creek Bugger Bass version that I have pictured here. Um, I've got two versions, the olive and brown and the craw orange and brown. Um, they're both crayfish imitations at the end of the day. Um, they might not look exactly like a detailed crayfish pattern that you might dead drift, um, but they've got the crayfish colorations. The olive and brown is more of a molting crayfish. Your um, orange and brown is more of a summertime, dog days of summer crayfish pattern. And um, it incorporates brass eyes and a fabric paint head uh, that kind of gives it a jigging action and enables it to get down. Um, the lever action that you get um, from the dumbbell eyes kicking the rubber legs, marabou and soft tackles up in the rear, really creates uh, a lot of movement. And the materials in these flies are really important because they, a lot of them move when you're not doing anything to the fly. I always kind of incorporate this type of material style into the flies that I tie because you get more bang for your buck as far as action during the retrieve. Because you're going to be incorporating pauses into your retrieves, you're going to be, uh, you know, varying your retrieve speed when you're jigging, having materials that move very easily on the drop as flies are sinking is really important because when you're not doing anything, the fish are still getting something presented to them. I get a lot of savage strikes because of this, um, especially on the crayfish pattern here, uh, the brown and orange. When you're stripping that really aggressively and then you hit a pause, sometimes that stop and then the materials continue to move. I'm telling you, I've had small mouth about rip the rod out of my hand. I wasn't ready for it. That's on me, but um, I've caught some nice fish. Um, I do have some fishing footage of the olive and brown, the same type of deal. Um, you just get really hard takes uh, because the fish are seeing something that resembles a crayfish and I've kind of copied the colors of what I've seen in my local waterways. So these two color combos are kind of two that um, I use basically. Uh, these are your, your kind of your basic crayfish colors um, and they'll suit you in a lot of different water environments, especially here in Northeast Ohio. Um, but what I really want to talk about with these flies is that if you notice, they're not exact replications of what crayfish look like in nature. Um, I have found, after tying hundreds and hundreds of crayfish patterns, is that you need to save your detailed crayfish patterns for your smaller crayfish flies. And what I mean by that is, these ones, are, you know, they're not small, but they're, but they're not big either. Uh, but the larger that you go, all you need to do is get the color combo right and be impressionistic. Have it look somewhat like what you're trying to imitate. And I found that the impressionistic larger crayfish patterns, when applicable, fish better than some of the more detailed crayfish patterns that I've put together. Um, especially when you're talking about pincher size, but we'll get into that in another video. Um, the detailed crayfish patterns I save for when I'm you know, fishing smaller sizes and I'm dead drifting, um, maybe even under an indicator, um, and I'm trying to get the attention of fish that are potentially feeding on juvenile crayfish, um, where they need to see the separation in claws and a little bit of a smaller body. As far as larger crayfish, when you're talking early in the season, um, you know, olive and brown here is great when you're talking springtime crayfish. That can be anywhere between April and the beginning of June. Um, here in Ohio, uh, the bigger crayfish come out. Um, you know, when the water temperature hits about 50 degrees, um, they tend to be molting and uh, they tend to have more of an olive coloration to them. All through spring, uh, you'll see cycles of this and then on through the early summer as well. Once we start getting into the dog days of summer, we're talking July, August, uh, and into the beginning of September. I see a lot more crayfish that are in that brown, tan, burnt orange coloration in our waterways. So what you end up seeing here are just two patterns that cover you for most of the season, and they're impressionistic. They're sized to be able to um, be the perfect size for an edible crayfish. Um, I'm not saying that uh, you know fish aren't eating big crayfish. They are, um, but it's a risk that fish take when they try to swallow down a massive claw. 
Um, and it takes a lot of work and it can be uh, really stressful to their system. So um, having these sized crayfish that don't have a huge claw profile tend to do just a little bit better from what I've seen uh, and what I've fished over the years. One of the big keys here to this pattern is the center of each one of these patterns. Now they both have different bodies. This one is dubbed. This one is a wrapped chenille, but they both have something in common and it's gaps. There's a gap between the head and the tail of the fly. This gap increases movement when you're not doing anything to the fly because water is able to pass through that center and activate the materials that you've tied together. So the rubber legs and soft hackle that sits in front of the saddle hackle and the marabou topped with the soft hackle and the tail, those all really get activated because there's a gap here and water can move through. So the top of each one of these sections will move great for you um, by doing absolutely nothing. In fact, the soft tackle up front in front of the saddle, the saddle will move a little bit more stiffly. Um, it doesn't undulate as much. Um, it creates body and this will move and undulate up against it almost like octopus tentacles. Um, so you get a lot of action um, with not a lot of action from you. Um, and this really solicits a lot of uh, strikes for you. Um, you won't realize it until you start incorporating pauses into your treves and, and varying things up uh, because you can't, you can't just have a brick of materials on a hook and expect things to move well. You've got to have gaps. You've got to have some space for, for water to move and benefit you. And you'll see the, the productivity of your patterns increase as your hookup percentages increase, I guarantee incorporating some gaps like this into your fly tying and kind of making those gaps a little bit more pronounced like this uh, will help you out, especially on your buggers and streamers. It's not always doable, not all patterns need gaps, but on buggers like this, when you're trying to impersonate a crayfish and get a lot of action out of it and jig fish up from the bottom, this is the ticket. And then of course for durability, I always incorporate uh, on my creek buggers, um, I put fabric paint at the head. It just makes it um, a little bit more flashy, gives it a little pop of color, and it improves durability. Uh, the durability is really important, especially when you're talking jig flies. Um, you know, these patterns, I tie a lot of them up at once. And when you're talking about jigging and bouncing flies off of rocks into wooded structure, uh, you know, in my Northeast Ohio streams, there's even, you know, there's junk and clutter sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have the nice waterways like some people do out west. Um, so, you know, you're jigging around a lot of junk and that can beat your fly heads up really fast. You'd be really surprised how durable fabric paint is. And I encourage you, if you're going to tie patterns like this, try to see how creative you can get and how you can incorporate some fabric paint into your flies. Saltwater tires have used it for years, but it's got a really high amount of durability and you can get really fun with it. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with it um, by just incorporating different colors. You can blend them together, do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, so I encourage you to try that out um, and get some practice in with it and see what you can come up with. So some of the key takeaways I just wanted to kind of summarize here before I uh, finish up this video. When you're tying crayfish patterns, especially you know if you're you know in the Northeast or you've got crayfish in your home waters that resemble these color schemes, just try to um, make them more impressionistic the larger that you go. Save your detail for the smaller patterns. If you're gonna tie like a bugger style crayfish like I do here, make sure to incorporate some gaps in the center. Make sure that you've got some soft hackles in there to complement some of the saddle hackle and marabou that you're already going to put on there for a basic bugger construction. And when you're tying bass flies, one key thing that I forgot to mention, always incorporate rubber legs. If you can incorporate rubber legs into your bass flies, you're going to get more takes. Rubber legs kick and move when you're not doing anything to them. Um, and bass love rubber legs. Um, obviously, there's a whole industry dedicated to bass fishing um, with soft plastics. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, I also incorporate um, a lot of rubber legs into uh, my trout streamers as well, even, you know, my trout nymphs. 
Um, you know, I always, I've just kind of fallen in love with rubber legs and I see so many applications for them. So make sure that if you're tying these up as well, not only to try the fabric paint and maybe mixing in some soft tackles and some gaps, but incorporating some of those rubber legs, so you can get a lot of action out of a fly, even if it's not the biggest one out there. I hope this video helped you and I hope that it can give you some ideas um, and maybe some confirmations on how you're tying your crayfish patterns. Um, I hope this helps you kind of maybe unlock some things that you've been wanting to try. Um, and I hope that you can create something awesome uh, that you enjoy fishing. Uh, the Creek Bugger Bass version is available on my website at tfgflies.com. I tie these flies up all the time. You can get those from me and I'll ship them out to you. Um, I'm always adding new colors uh, as well and more patterns, so check back with me. And if you don't see, see something, feel free to send me an email and I'll see what I can do for you. If you like this video, go ahead and hit thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more fly fishing and fly tying videos. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care, and we'll catch you next time.